Homework. So let's read through it together. Um, Danahi's rectangular dog kennel measures four feet by ten feet. So I'm just going to make a sketch here because remember a sketch is always a good idea if you can. And this is going to be four by ten. All right. You good. Can you see that? She plans to double the area of the kennel. Okay, double the area by extending each side by an equal amount. So she wants to extend each side by an equal amount. Okay, so there, there, in all those directions. Okay, so we have a new, a new kennel uh, rectangle. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to set up an equation. Uh, well, here's the label diagram. Okay. Write an equation to model the new area. So we want the area of the larger now rectangle. So the the width here, okay, let's call this the width of the new triangle from here to here. That's going to be four, here's four, plus some unknown value, plus some unknown value, right? The the unknown value, that's going to be our variable. So the width is going to be four plus two x. And the area of the larger triangle, also we have to figure out what this length would be. And that's going to be 10 plus 2x. Okay, so that's, that's B, an equation to model the new area. And that equals area. All right. Now, what are the dimensions of the new dog kennel to the nearest tenth of a foot? So we're looking at this here, and you say, well, um, I could solve for x, but I don't have a number here. But in the question, if you recall, she plans to double the area. So this area is 40, right, square feet. And so this new area has to be what? Double that, OK? So now you've got 80 square feet equals this right here. 4 plus 2x times 10 plus 2x. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll multiply that all through and uh, we'll gather like terms and we'll, we'll try and uh, solve for x because this is going to turn into a quadratic, right? So let's multiply that through. It's going to be 40 over here plus 8x plus, plus 20x plus 4x squared. So if we bring the 80 over here, it's going to be a minus 80. So this is going to be 0 over here. I'm going to write the 4x squared first. And I'm going to combine these x terms. So that's going to be plus 28x, looks like. And then this is going to be 40 minus 80 minus 40. Anybody get that? I don't have the answer in front of me, so that look good? We're doing that right so far? Okay. So it looks like I can take a common factor out. I could take a 4 out. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. It's going to be x squared plus 7x minus 10. Right? And we could go ahead and complete the square, but I th think this might be, um, well, is this going to be easy to factor or not? Let's see. Can we factor this? Numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 7? Uh, I want to say 5 and 2, but... Boy, I don't know. Anything else? 10 and 1, 5 and 2? Is that going to be, can we do that or no? Can we factor that? Do we have to complete the square? I think we have to complete the square. So let's get the constant over the other side. Let's do this. I'm going to complete this square, and I'm going to add the same amount to the other side as well. So half of 7 is 3.5 squared is, and you can get your calculator out, decimals are okay here, they said to nearest decimal, right, tenth of a foot, so 3.5 squared, 12.25, 12.25, okay, so this is where, this is where it gets tricky, right, completing the square to do this, because you can't factor this easily, so I have 22.25 over on this side now, and this is now a completed square, so I'll write it as x plus 3.5 all squared. Okay, does everyone see that? This now is a, uh, a perfect square trinomial, and I can rewrite it like this. 
half of this, right? Whatever it is that I squared goes in there. So now, now what I do is I take the square root of both sides. We'll do plus or minus over here. We've got to remember that. So what is the square root of 22.25? Let's see. 4.717 plus or minus 4.717. I'll keep, I'll keep more decimal places than I need during the question. And then this is going to be x plus 3.5. Everybody follow me so far? Okay. So if I subtract 3.5 from both sides now, this is what I get. I get x equals plus or minus 4.717 minus 3.5. So there's going to be two answers. What are the two answers going to be? Well, let's take this uh, 4.717 or so. We'll leave that decimal place there. At minus 3.5. What do we get? 1.2. And then the other one is going to be negative 4.717 or so. Minus 3.5. That's going to be negative 8.2. So do both of these answers work in this question? Well, what is x? x was the extension here, right? So a negative length, a negative length is not good. Okay, we, we can reject that answer if it's a negative length. So it looks like this one's no good, but it looks like the extension of 1.2 is an answer that we can work with. So the, d the new dimensions, again, it's 4 plus 1.2 and 10 plus, well, actually, is that true? Wait a minute. No, 4 plus 2 times x. Here we go. So 4 plus 2.4 and 10 plus 2.4. This is 6.4 by 12.4. Now, we'll want to check that, okay? One way we can check that is by multiplying those two and see if they come to 80 or pretty close to 80. We've rounded, so does 6.4 times 12.4, let's see. Uh, that gets us pretty close to 80. Now, we've rounded these numbers, so that's pretty reasonable, 79.36, okay? Because we've rounded these numbers, that's pretty reasonable. So to the nearest square foot, that looks like could be the answer. Okay, so that's number eight. That's the correct answer there. And that's the working of number eight. This is the kind of question that you're going to need to know how to do. It's got some of the math in it. It's got some of the uh, problem-solving skills. You have to create a diagram, create an equation, then solve it. Evaluate the answers and check it out. Okay, so that's, a, that's an overall question you're going to need to uh, maybe some more practice on. Now uh, we'll take a look at 11 as well. This is a very similar question. So number 11 says that Brian's placing a photograph behind a 12 by 12 inch piece of matting. Now they, they made the uh, sketch for you, so that's really nice. He positions the photograph so the matting is twice as wide at the top. That's where we get 2x and the bottom and as it is on the sides. So it's, it's only 1x extended on the sides. Okay. Uh, the visible area of the photograph, okay, that's right here, this area right here, is 54 square inches. So what are the dimensions of the photograph? What are the dimensions of the photograph? We're looking for this side length and this side length. Those are dimensions. So we need to kind of put all this stuff together. So we need to put all this stuff together. So um, I know that the area here is 54. So can I come up with an expression for the area of this photograph. Well, let's redraw the rectangle here. If area is 54. I need um, the length here, and I need the width. So how do I express the length? Okay, here's the length right here. What I'm given is this length of the mat. And this is smaller by 1x on this side, and it's smaller by 1x on this side. So the length is 12 minus x 
minus x. Everyone see that? 12 minus 2x. You've got 12 on the mat, minus x on this side, minus x on this side. What would the width be then? Again, we're starting off with 12 here and we're subtracting this much and this much. So what's the width? Shout it out, anybody, if you know. Yes, 12 minus 4x. Very good. So now we can make an equation given what we, we have now. So 54 is the area of the picture, and the length of that picture is 12 minus 2x, and the width is 12 minus 4x. I have an equation with only one variable, and now you can solve for that variable. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to go ahead and do just like we did in number 8 and solve for x. Nice work. Thank you. Okay, so again, hopefully you've had a chance to work through number 11. I've got you, I got you set up to here. So what you want to do is you want to expand everything, get to a quadratic equation. This quadratic equation right here can't take out a common factor um, and make it nice and even, but if we're going to complete the square to, uh, to solve, then you do have to take out, you have to divide everything by 8. So this is what I did, I divided everything by 8, okay? I moved the constant to the other side. This constant is actually this number right here, all right? Then what I did is I completed this square. Half of negative 9 is negative 4.5. Squared is 20.25. So this is now the completed square over here. And I have to add the same to both sides of the equation. So this over here on the left becomes 9. This can be rewritten as the perfect square um, binomial squared, which is x minus 4.5, because that's what we, that was half of b, right? So that goes there. You get to this spot, and you take the square root of both sides. And when you take the square root of a number, it has to be positive or negative. So the square root on this side cancels out with the square on, on that right there. Those cancel out. And you've got plus or minus 3, or positive or negative 3, equals x minus 4.5. So you get everything over to one side, and this is what x is going to equal. These are the two mathematical solutions that you would come across, okay? Now, probably only one is going to be allowed. So let's see which one might be good. They're both positive, so that's good. But here's the, here's the problem, okay? This x right here, 7.5, look at this diagram. One of our dimensions was 12 minus... 4x, you see that? So what's 12 minus 4 if x is 7.5? That's going to be a negative number. That's 12 minus a lot. So that's going to be a negative number. Can you have a negative dimension? No, you can't. So we reject 7.5. Okay. So again, when you're solving mathematically like this, especially with a quadratic, you're probably going to get two answers. And one of the answers may not be reasonable, may not apply to the question, so you reject it. Now let's check the other one. What about 1.5? Is that going to work? Well, 12 minus 4 times 1.5, that's going to be 6. So this is going to be a dimension of 6 over here. 12 minus 2 times 1.5, that's going to equal 9. So those are reasonable dimensions, right? And if the visible area is 54 square inches, 6 times 9 is 54. So the question says, what are the dimensions of the photograph? And again, here are your dimensions, so we'll plug in our value for x that we found. And so the width is 12 minus um, 2x, or is it 4x? 4x. And the length is 12 minus the 2x. And that equals up here, equals the uh, 6. And this is the 9, so we'll put some units on that to finish that question off. What is it? Inches. So 6 inches and 9 inches. Okay? So there's the answer to number 11. And um, hopefully you got that on your own. If you didn't, hopefully now you understand how to do that. Those are two of the, t those questions are on the tough side. 
they're a little tougher. So, um, yeah, hopefully that helps.